Hi everyone, it's me again, your virtual neighborhood mobile front hall TME popping up with another video. This one will be very relevant to you as far as your NCS 540 FH deployment is concerned. Before we plan deployment of our front hall routers and configure radio interfaces on them, it is important for us to understand how we can derive the CIPRI rates on those radio interfaces. I'll divide this series into five episodes First of which is this one talking about the history and the basics of CIPRI, while the four other parts will go in depth into front hall capacity planning. So let us get started with the history of the protocol. Back in 2003, Ericsson, Huawei, NEC, Norton Networks and Siemens decided to define a critical component of a 3G base station. They first broke down one unit of a 2G base station into two units the radio unit and its control unit. Further, they went ahead and defined the interface between these two units and called it CIPRI, Common Public Radio Interface. Over the years, as Siemens moved out and Norton Networks liquidated, the final consortium as we know today is Ericsson, Huawei, NEC and Nokia fully responsible for CIPRI specifications. Was there an alternate to this? Yes, there was. There always is. Hyundai, LG, Nokia, Samsung and ZTE formed Upside even before CIPRI was announced to the world. This was more of an open alternative like the modern day Open RAN initiative but somehow this didn't work out and Nokia moved out and joined the CIPRI forum. Both solutions are based on the implementation of digital radio over fiber concept whereby the radio signal is sampled and quantized and after encoding transmitted towards the baseband for processing. These two specifications differ in the way that information is transmitted. While SIPRI is a SIP serial line interface transmitting constant bitrate data over a dedicated channel, OPSI uses a packet-based interface. Do note that the mapping methods of SIPRI are more efficient than OPSI, and most global vendors have chosen SIPRI for their products. Finally, as of today, we are developing our systems based on CIPRI spec 7.0. So that's the spec you need to pick for your CIPRI learning. Now let us look at how RAN has evolved over time and how CIPRI has changed with it. If we look at these conventional BTS from 2G days, you can see that we had the antenna sitting atop a tower with feeder cables running down to the cabinet. This cabinet had a combined RF and baseband processing unit inside it. Now, with the need for more RAN efficiency and transmission quality, we broke that single unit and created two different ones during the 3G days. The radio unit, also called the remote radio unit, was now mounted on the tower along with the antennas. We ran an optical fiber cable from the radio unit to a baseband unit sitting inside a cabinet below. The technology used to talk between the RU and BBU was chosen to be CIPRI. Do note, this kind of an installation is also known as a distributed RAN architecture. Now as we slowly move to leaner cell size to save power and other operational costs, we started running long fiber cables between the RU sitting at the cell site and the baseband unit sitting at a central location. This baseband unit or a pool of BBUs could now aggregate multiple cell sites. This kind of an installation is called a centralized RAM. Beyond that, we are developing architectures based on virtualization and openness of the front hall interface, which I'm afraid is out of scope of this video series. Okay, so now moving to the spec. This is how they define the CIPRI interface. It is a digitized base station interface between the REC, the radio equipment controller, which is the control unit or the baseband unit, and the RE, which is the radio unit. That interface, as you can see, is multiplexing a lot of information. So we have user data, control and management, and synchronization all pushed together through that interface. Our focus of the rest of the videos in this series will be on the IQ data between the RE and the REC. Before you move on to the second episode, let me share with you the CIPRI rates that is supported on the NCS 540FH platform in case you already didn't know. So rates 3 to 8 are supported, which means all of those can be carried in a 10 gig interface. 
Our entire SIPRI portfolio is built on that interface and we don't plan to support lower rates 1 and 2 and higher rates 9 and 10 which need SIPRI 1 gig and 25 gig interfaces respectively. Listen, we hardly hear about those use cases with these SIPRI options. Now that you have a decent understanding of SIPRI, let us jump into how we can calculate SIPRI rate based on the RAN information that we get from the customer. The RAN information is essentially radio resources that we need to digitize and insert into a SIPRI based bitstream between the RE and REC. Today's video is based on 4G, so the frames that we'll talk about will essentially be LT frames. Now, LTE uses both frequency division duplex and time division duplex to allocate radio resources between the user equipment and the antenna. But we will focus on FDD for this lecture. Further, for the downlink that is between the antenna and the UE, LTE uses orthogonal frequency division multiple access, while in the uplink that is the transmission from the UE towards the antenna, LTE uses single carrier frequency division multiple access. In both techniques, data is encoded on multiple narrowband subcarriers, minimizing the negative effects of multipate fading, distributing the interference effect across different users. Now let us look at this table. This doesn't represent a specific operator, but it is still an accurate representation of a small operator's deployment. Let us try to decode this table. Starting with LTE band numbers that are shown here, if I were you, I won't do a generic search of these band numbers, but rather try to understand where the customer operator belong to, which geographic location, and then do a search based on that location. The search will be what spectrum and channel bandwidth are associated with the given band number. In this table, you can see that the operator has been allocated the band number 7, 3, and 29 by the local government. These bands are further mapped to the spectrum of 2600, 1800 and 700 MHz. The channel bandwidths are 20, 15 and 10 respectively. And it is same for both uplink and downlink which is generally the case. The final data point that will help us derive the front of SIPRI bandwidth is the antenna configuration or the MIMO layers. Over here you can see it is a mix of 2 transmit 2 receive and 4 transmit 4 receive. In my next video, we'll do a deep dive into LTE resources allocated at a cell site and understand them to res with respect to time and frequency domain. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.